Hello and welcome back everybody as we're preparing for game two of our best of five fearless draft series and game one Winthrop won with a composition that again I was saying they kind of had to win with when you consider yeah. that they can't play those champs again but they did it beat and they also looked pretty good outside of a you know a little shaky early game. Yeah, I honestly think a lot of that stems from the level one that I thought was a great read coming through from Blue Otter. And it, it felt like they had everything under their control, even though Denethor was running top lane, even though uh, they had some gold in their pockets from that side of the map. I just thought Blue Otter had it. And it was that Baron play. I said it during the yep. cast. I said it when we were, uh, ah. I said it when we weren't live. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> that was where things started to fall apart. We've been talking and I mean, about it. We've been talking I about that I credit to yeah. Winthrop. I think they played the mid and late game really well. Yeah. Uh, with regards to how they play the map, where they put pressure, and how they set up for objectives. But uh, part of that, I, I think Blue Water should have had a much better chance. Hey, we want to give props to some of the individual players. We were also talking before coming back live. Sword yeah. on the Talia looked clean, yeah. deathless yeah. in that game, and a yeah. big part of why they were actually able to uh, win a lot of those mid-game fights. Yeah, he was clean with it. Good alts. I don't think he missed a single W when it really mattered. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just unreal the damage threat he had on the carries, specifically Lynx, making it harder for him to team fight, even with the Tom Kench. So shout yeah. out to him. Well, I'll take another look at those drafts that were from game one, because a reminder for you, draft means that if you, as a team, play a champion, you cannot play it again for the rest That's of right. the series. Blue Otter, they had a very late game scaling style composition. Or maybe not hyper late game, but definitely scale Jigsaw up is a hyper late items. game. You can say that. It's okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Go in for the team fights. Winthrop University, a little more freestyle with their draft, had more options in the early game, and they showed what they could do with that, but they cannot play these champions again. So, Beatdown, yeah. what do you think are the most impactful for either of these teams? When we look at champ pools, when we look at what's been working for them, what are the big picks that are already gone? Uh, I think it's the Lux for Samikin, to be honest. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah because I, I, I was saying earlier, the interesting thing about this mid matchup is the unique champions that they play that other people don't. But I will say it has been more of a focus for Samikin to lean more towards his unique picks. He'll play Huey, which a lot of other uh, laners play, but a lot of it has been the Lux, the Zoe, like the two times it has gone through and uh, champions like that. So now, especially if this goes to a later series, well, what are they going to be picking for him? Especially Blue Water. Uh, they went blue side uh, as their decision. Uh, we have seen a lot of uh, REB1s, and I'm wondering if that's the setup they want to go for. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, That'd just to get, get a strong Same mid laner right away. Samikin's Ari and Oriana were also standouts that I remember from that's back true. in, you know, off-season tryouts. Uh, but they're actually banned anyway, the Oriana themselves. So I, Yeah, maybe I they do want first pick Ari. I expect mid lane to be heavily focused throughout this entire series for pick and ban, just based on, um, you know, what Sammy Kin's able to do when he gets on one of his comfort picks. Uh, and Sword also, especially after that last series. Yeah, yeah. he still got it. Uh, it doesn't matter if he uh, roll swapped and then came back to mid lane. We've had kind of a resurgence of people coming back to mid lane after roll swapping Bradley as Big well. Big fan. So shout out yeah, to yeah. The, the mid laners out there. 100%. The Poppy ban. That one's interesting. I wonder if that is signaling something uh, like an Ari. I'm wondering if that comes Kindred. through. Uh, could be Kindred. I'm wondering if that means we're going to see the rise come through from Sword. As I imagine, that's a pick he is looking to, again, being the only one to play it so far this tournament. He's looking to bring that up when it makes the most sense. Oh, it's a Zarya. That makes sense. Interesting. We also see the Talia banned from Winthrop University. They've got and they their also one don't have Talia buy. game. They'll probably ban it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good point there as well. So Zeri locked in for Blue Otter. And I'm happy that you actually mentioned that the Vi and the Nautilus are both gone. Yeah. Those are the two point and click ultimates that can just lock down a, a champion like Zeri, who otherwise can sometimes be hard to get on top of with her movement speed. So uh, I think it's actually pretty smart for Blue Otter to say, all right, well, the big threats are gone. Let's just lock this in now. And Winthrop, they're going to get a big threat of their own because now it's their turn to play Jinx. Four. Since uh, they didn't end up playing that in the first series. I'm wondering... What support matchup is going to look like? You have two scaling bot laners, very team fight focused, a lot of late game damage coming through. So I'm wondering, I wouldn't be surprised if Winthrop maybe wait until the later stages of the draft to get themselves that matchup. And even though we see the Rel, guys, remember, it could be jungle Rel. That still exists. Could be jungle, yeah. I, I like those flex picks there. Champions that can go into the multiple roles. Also, I'm just going to say, I know game one, we were spoiled with all the action and fights bot we lane. I'm just going to assume with the Jinx versus Zeri, we can probably not look at bot lane for like the first five minutes of the game. Nah. Especially if Soraka's locked in. I think they're just having some fun <laughs> with the hovers, though. 
uh, as Boo Otter will most likely go for a support in a jungle here, save some of their solo lanes for later, yeah. and there's the Rakan. Yeah, I think that ends up being fine. I mean, you want dive so you can get on top of Jinx and try and make space for your AD carry to do damage. I'm wondering what the jungle is going to look like. I think Vi would be very interesting just because I mean, it's, it's available to them. Poppy's yeah. out of the picture, which is a pretty solid answer as well. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here early on. You could go for the Renekton yourself if you really want to, if Lawrence is feeling it in this eh. team. Okay. Wow. We're just going for a Zier. Straight up that's for Samikin. Okay. That's an interesting one. I haven't one. had to cast a Zier in weeks, by the way. <laughs> I mean, because it's been gone all of <laughs> last match gone, and yeah. all of playoffs. Yeah, so it ends up being the Azir. Not quite uh, what I was expecting in the mid lane and not something we often see from Sammy Kim, but I mean, it's another source of damage. You have a lot of playmaking yeah. potential with the Emperor's Divide. Uh, I think it ends up working just fine. So it's Sword who will take the Ari. Sword with the Ari into Azir. It seems like Blue Otter back-to-back -back games now are opting for a little bit more scaling, a little bit more mid to late game team fight focus with their champions. I'm wondering if that's just the style that the team prefers to play and they're not feeling like they can answer Winthrop early game, or if they're just disrespecting Winthrop and saying they'll give us that scaling, which they almost got to in that game one uh, to their credit. I think a little bit of that level one had something to do with that. But now the rest of the bands here, focus on those junglers, focus on those solo laners that we don't want available. So it's Rumble, wow. it's Wukong, it's Lee Sin taking off from Blue Otter as they get the last ban. I'm trying to think what else is available. I'm betting it ends up being another jungler, maybe the Xin Zhao, because that's a, a pretty fair pairing with the yeah. Ari, I think, considering Vi's already out, out of the picture. Or maybe that they let that through because Musix is fine playing the Jax. So there's a kind of a couple options Blue Otter can go towards. Okay, so they're just going to ban it all together. Sure. Xin Zhao taking off the table here. I'm happy you highlight the Jax. I think Jax could get a lot of value against a Zeri, against a, a Zier. Uh, if you want to lock it in here for Winthrop, but they still have that Rel. So there's also an opportunity where they go for their own solo lane pick. Although I guess technically Jack still could be flexed a little bit, depending on That's Denethor's true. ability to pilot it. I don't know. Denethor's got an interesting champ. Well, I don't know if Jax is in it, but it is locked in regardless for Winthrop. I would like to think he can play the champion. I don't think I've seen him play it either Gwen, personally. Camille. And it's... I think it ends up being nice either way because yeah. it does leave everything a little bit up in the air for Winthrop. It is a good answer into the Renekton even because Lawrence could go that route as well. Even though you don't usually win it out in lane, you do outscale in the side lane, you will win that 1v1. So we'll see yep. what this last pick ends up being. We're gonna have to go for a jungler and the options are limited. It's not going to be uh, Talia, Wukong, Vi? Poppy, Lee Sin, or Xin Zhao. They already played the J4. Sejuani, okay. Said, it's yeah, a frontliner, sure. can start the fight, non-committal engage, and yeah. creates a lot of space for champions like Azir and Zeri. Yeah, and then it's a great champion that Rakan can follow up on. So now the verdict's just going to be, uh, what's this last pick end up being? Is I wonder if we see the Kindred or something uh, end up coming through, and you just throw the Jax into the top lane. I kind of like the jungle matchup. I also mm. like... I'm trying to think about uh, lane advantages. I think you have push in a couple of lanes too, so I think this is a good kindred angle. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, B Dad, you got a high success rate with calling these champions. There it is, Jack going up man. into Renekton and Kindred locked in. Hovering those uh, flex picks actually paid dividends to Winthrop University because we were even like, is Rel going jungle? We don't know where all yeah, these champions yeah, yeah. are it going. Was that was such a there. headache for Blue Otter. I mean, once I saw Jax come through, I was pretty sure it was going to be real support. But yeah, it, it yeah. ended up being a pretty nice draft coming through here for Winthrop. And we want to talk about what the comp is overall. I really like what they're working with because I, you have good engage, but you also have great response when enemies dive into you. That's what Blue Otter's comp wants to do. You have the Lamb's True. Respite. You have the Counter-Strike if people are moving into you as well, which is a great threat of CC. And you have all this Rel CC too. So not only do you uh, keep yourself safe and alive to continue doing damage you have a great reset comp here with this re jinx keeping yourselves alive what does that increase the chances of kangas your first kill what does your first kill do that's gonna win you the fight it's the resets from re from jinx and they can just snowball that forward pressure is gonna be on for blue water to absorb the rel engage because they also have a pretty strong team fight if they can survive long enough to get their damage out we're loaded on to that beautiful summoner's rift for game two of this do or die best of five loser goes home winner challenges lit esports for the final spot in the nacl summer split 
That's right. I mean, Winthrop University already doing better than they did in the promotion tournament last split, even though they didn't end up making it into the NACL for spring 2024. Now they're even closer. Now they only have a couple more steps left, Kangas, to be able to finally make that jump that they were trying to make last year. And right now, chance behind Winthrop University. Blue Otter getting some behind themselves now. Oh, we got a fish. He got the gold. Minigame? He got a gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. Wait, why? I, How, what? I, I, if you do the, it's like if you do the fishing emote in that, but I, I don't remember oh, exactly it how again. it works, but you get gold. Yeah. Minions what is going gold. on? How did I never know about this? I honestly only found out a couple of weeks ago. Kai actually gave me a lot of flack for not knowing about it. Go so shout him. out to him for focusing. Go stop him, yeah. Lawrence. He's just it's farming just free the gold. The, he doesn't the know. River. He's fishing the river. Is it, okay, so now we have to change. It's no longer farming. It's fishing, right? Gotcha. Oh, he's just printing money. Look at him. Oh, this my God, dude. I GG, no? He's almost got a, a part of a ward. Or a ward spot. I was going to say, yeah, it's not a lot of gold, but it'll matter later. You'll you, see, guys. Can you tell him I'm not a top laner? I, I don't know all these top lane interactions. Yeah. I mean, I would be... I would imagine a very small number of people know about that one, but... I mean, I've been playing this game for nine years of my life. I can't believe there's still things I don't know about it. It's That's just the cool wild. thing about League. True. That is quite cool. Hey, this isn't supposed to happen, by the way. Cool. Yeah, just smacking Lawrence as soon as he gets delayed. Wow. Well, uh, I mean, he's getting the gold. He's getting the push level one. Hey, everything's coming up for Winthrop's topside yet again. Remember, that was a big... That was a big uh, form of success for them oh. in the early game, uh, in game one. And part of how they managed to kind of mount the comeback that they did against Blue Otter. And wow, Denethor, this dude, uh, he just did not care. The fact yep. that he's forcing Lawrence to, I imagine, blow his teleport early is such a big deal. Like, this is supposed to be a good lane matchup for Renekton, right? This is Denethor, that player we've been hyping up, Kangas. Excited us last year, continues to excite us this year. Denethor in the tryouts in the offseason. Didn't catch as many of his uh, OQ games, but in, at least uh, early on in the year, he was doing this to a lot of the top laners that were trying out for NACL starting spots. This is what made me so excited for him as a player, is his ability to just smash in lane. And yep. also, translate it. Oftentimes, top laners that show this mechanical ability and uh, matchup knowledge, yeah, they can get the lead, but then they might get picked up in side lanes, you get a little bit of main character syndrome. Denethor, I don't always see that with. I also see him translate it well into the mid game and group up with the team. So I think he's the all around package. The reason we're so excited about an engagement of bot lane. Mobility could be in trouble. Has to pop the ghost. Oh, yeah, they got it. going for it. Can flash forward one more auto. Mobility makes it out alive just barely. I think that feels. Oh, hold on. Okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe a bit of a cast curse on Denethor. Not sure exactly how he ended up in that position, but he has to flash away to safety. Yeah, because what's usually supposed to happen is they. With Jax into Renekton, Renekton, you just want to take short trades, and that favors you heavily because of uh, your inbuilt sustain and things like that. And I guess it's harder for Denethor because now Lawrence, I mean, one, he had the health advantage because he TP'd back, and that he, you could see that Denethor is trying to skip this big wave in. Oh, it ends up being the ward that makes that difference, too. Mm. Okay, I mean, yeah, he's just going for a rough back right there, and music was yeah. in the right place at the right time. Lawrence almost gets a solo kill on him, too. Yeah, you got to be a little more respectful with those resets, Denethor. And still, he comes back with a better buy. That's all because of what he forced Lawrence to do early on. So I still think Denethor is honestly in a pretty decent spot. Uh, as long as he places, you know, pretty decent wards and doesn't get caught with his flashdown. That's really the only concern. True. He does have a window here. Waves pushing back into him. We'll see if Lawrence exactly. goes for his own reset to try and catch back up in the item advantage that Denethor had, but we have a slight pause in the game, so we that do. gives us some more time to break down what to expect from game two here. We talked a little bit about it from Winthrop's side, what their composition's able to do, looking for those resets. I want to take the time now to talk about it from the opposite side. Blue Otter, when you look at their composition, what do you think their strength windows are? When are they going to be most advantageous on the map, and how do they get to that spot? So I think early on, there's still an option for them to actually try and fight for these drakes. Because even though the Kindred ult yeah. uh, is, is really good, 
I think, for, for how these fights are going to go. Okay, so yeah, we're back into the game. But I think Blue Water still have opportunities to get really fast kills and get the ball rolling in this team fight. Because the hope is that you get kills before Winthrop does so their carries don't start resetting. That's kind of the goal here. But as we get later on into the game, that's going to be a lot harder, I think. Especially when Denethor ends up being more effective because he is that Jax that's going to get stronger as time goes on. Jax is such a terrifying scaling champion. Because if he gets out of lane or out of jungle, as he's also been a jungler, he just does a, do disgusting things. He's got like two, three items. But we're out to the dragon right now. Kindred started it up, but is pretty low in health. And Blue Otter have fought their way into the river. Going to be an awkward approach. Now nah, they let it go. As Mobility and Shookies have actually kind of locked off links here. Oh! Now Samikin comes in. I guess we missed a charm right there. Yep. And uh, Trickster's in trouble. First blood to Samikin, the Azir. Getting benefactored there. As Sammy can try to get a little more damage on the sword, not gonna get the kill, and they just push Winthrop off of Dragon and take it away. That's a really nice recognition from Music. As soon as the charm goes wide, watch what he does. First, they force them off, and this is this is Winthrop trying to get a sneak here. Their bot lane is getting pushed in, but Sword has the angle to move first. But there was good vision set up, so that they knew about go. it the entire the, It just missed, <laughs> and then instantly Music goes for the Q flash. And that was what made this play work so well, because the hope was you could blow up Samikin immediately, but as soon as you yeah. lost that ability with the charm going wide, that's an easy play. Rough there. Could have been so good for Winthrop. At the end of the day, it's blew out of the walkout on top. They're onto the Grubs now. They get the first one. And with Lawrence shoving that wave in, they should be favored to pick up all three. But Sword's in the area. Another charm goes wide. Music might look for an engage here. And all three picked up by Blue Otter. Not even a smite steal from Kindred. That's good. That feels pretty good because Music, I, it is that extra experience. It means he will get to level six a little faster than normal. And it's good using the pressure of this Renekton that even though, you know, the early levels didn't go well for you, Lawrence is getting back to these normal levels of having that push on Denethor on the top side, even having that bit of the CS vantage advantage we usually see uh, at this stage of the game. So now Blue Otter, they have an opportunity to go for those five or six grubs with that advantage, and doing so is a way for them to get a lot of extra gold into their pockets. Right now, Denethor could be in some trouble. The wave's about to crash. He no has flash Kindred still. in his back pocket. No flash still, and Music's just gonna walk up. Shwani passive it jumps onto Lawrence, and he backs away. Denethor should be just fine, actually. Kindred also only has the one stack right now, so I think that would prefer to not have a lot, as much action. Just try and farm up and get to that fourth stacks. Well, I guess another way to farm it up is to get killed, so who knows? Maybe, <laughs> maybe sure. Kindred was ready for that one. Yeah, it's kind of the Katarina special, right? Do you need CS or do you need kills? What does the C in CS stand for? Champion score, no? Same, same. I, don't, I, I I'm pretty sure it's creep score. No, actually. no, no, no. That's no? crazy. You don't play the okay. fun champions, Kangas. That's what I'm you know, getting. No, I'm a support. I don't farm, so I get. Yeah, I will defer to the experts here. Ah, there you go. I just kind of assumed. Shame on me. Thanks. <laughs> that's what you get for assuming. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know what you are. You know they assume, say. Right? Right? Yeah, hey. I guess I hit on the stream. We'll let Twitch chat finish that one for us. Yeah, as they the know. bot wave is shoving in. I don't think we'll get a dive here either, though, as. It is nearby level six, and music is spotted in that bot tri brush. So everyone should just walk away fine. Two minutes until the next dragon. That's really the next thing to fight over, and Blue Otter are hoping to continue their stacking. And I also hope it's a good soul. Something like Infernal could be pretty big for them. Just uh, like you said, Hex killing the Ari too. or the Jinx is huge to prevent them from getting the resets in the fight. Obviously, death is the best form of CC. So. Preventing those champs from popping off. It can't be a hex deck, unfortunately, because that is the next dragon spawning. So, oh, you're right. Well, yeah. that's unfortunate. Yeah, I I'm with you on the infernal soul. That's definitely the high roll this game for uh, well, Blue Otter. Yeah. No, Prevent sure. the the resets from happening to begin with. Yeah, so they, yeah, they yeah, can't yeah. Get the damage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You're kind of cooking, Kang. You, know, you made up for the baby. you made up for the earlier conversation. I see you, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to I had to earn it back. You had to earn it. Of course you did. What you fighting for my reputation here. <laughs> Every second we're on the cast together, man. That's how it works. <laughs> you know, that is basically the job of broadcast. Exactly. If you think about it. See, you're keeping up. You get it. And what I wanted to say though is that yeah, Blue Otter, really hoping to play for the dragon stack. Rolls uh -oh. kind of reverse compared to this last game. You want gold early, and you don't want uh -oh. this to happen. 
Yeah, Music's in a bit of trouble here as the ultimate available throws it out, but has the backup of Lawrence and Sammykin. Sammykin has the shovel, oh, shovels nice. out of the Lambs respite, flashes away, so a trade of kills. Both junglers go down. Lawrence still pretty healthy here, can do a lot of damage to Sword, who jumps back in. Now Counter-Strike, Lawrence could be in trouble. Mega Death Rocket doesn't land on the Lawrence, so he gets out just fine. Wow. Yeah. That was a lot of fighting for a very few kills to go through, and we're going to watch this one again. I This is a nice trap coming through. Music, I have an idea that he is in danger because he had that ward that spotted out Denethor, but he hangs around anyway, and he gets punished for it uh, kind of heavily, I will say. I want to give Sword the shout-out, too, for hitting that blast code so that there was no response to come through. And Samikin is yeah. what makes this an equalizing play. Ooh, That's kind of the option actually have a fight. Oh. 2v2, Tricky's in trouble, has Flash, has to use it. It's also Flash and Ghost for mobility. So Blue Otter's bot lane just forcing out sums in a 2v2. I mean, that's a really nice play coming through there from Lynx and Robex. And this duo that was in NACL last year playing for AoE. Honestly, even though uh, in the back half of the year, they seem like they petered out a little bit, I still think they were really strong too overall. So good to see that they're able to continue that success in the qualifiers as they try to make their way back. I and mean, you can see Zeri has that first item going for them too. I like that Blue Otter are also trying to focus on the grubs. I, all he needs is two, and they have five. Although Kindred is nearby, Sword has also roamed. It looks like we'll get a 3v3 fight. Lawrence starting it a little early without the backup of the team. Music peels off of the grubs to try and help out Renekton, but now they're getting pincered. Swords here, if the Charm oh. lands, this is big. Flash forward, Flash answered. Charm goes wide, but that time it was a summoner spell burned forward. Hello. That's gonna be a big value death rocket. Tricky's looks for the engage into the tribe rush. Everyone from Blue Otter healed back, said, nah, nah, we don't want to take that one. No, they don't, and this ends up being a, a little tough. The hope was they could get two grubs, walk away. But because Withrop are actually sticking around on this top side, Kangas, there isn't that opportunity for them to run down and get the Drake. Because look at the minimap. Music's reset. He's walking his way down. Sammy can has TP, so he can jump back to the mid lane any second now, uh, even though he's choosing to walk it back. So there's still this chance that Blue Otter are going to be able to continue Drake stacking. And just look at what Lynx is doing on this bottom this side. Is so rough. 25 ability. CS up. He's yeah. got his third plate. Do I even oh, want to press painful. the gold button? Ah, I think I got to do it, man. I think the oh. grubs were a bit of a bait here. Again, artist formerly known as Trickster takes the time to get two grubs, and that's it. The enemy team take this time to reset. They get three plates on the Lynx, multiple waves denied from ability, and the dragon. This is Blue Otter absolutely walking out on top. After getting pushed off of the grubs themselves, I think yeah. a really good uh, kind of correction here is saying, all right, well, fine. If they're all topside, let's just go bot side instead. Yeah, now, because of that, Blue Water, they're halfway to what ends up being an Ocean Soul. Not uh, what we were hoping for, uh, or not what we were thinking would benefit Blue Water the most, but I mean, souls are still pretty valuable for the most part here. That healing, I'm sure, will come in handy. In the words of a wise madman, souls is soul. Uh, when, when, Ke when Chemtech Soul sucked, I never agreed with that statement. You know, I don't think it does now, but back then I just wanted that out there. All right, you had to say your piece. I, understand. I had to say my piece. I had to get on yeah. my soapbox. Okay, charm lands from Sword. Good damage on the Samikin. Is there in a one v one? Went for trying to fight for the blue buff, and they do not win that fight. Now Tricky goes for an engage, and the teams behind him just unable hey, ability. to do anything. Mobility gets oh, another wow. kill here, actually, and nope. trouble. No, never mind. It was Lynx that got that kill. Mobility's in trouble away from the team. Has the turret. And Sword's looking for a flag again. Charm just doesn't land wow. here. Went through University. They can't get the damage on the Blue Otter, and they need to set up the damage with these CC abilities. Just yeah. Keep a little white. Chucky's going in for the engage on his own. That was rough. And the reason I said mobility was this fight. I, I feel bad for Chukis, I'm not gonna lie. He gets the angle, he sets up the perfect stun combo so mobility could get the traps, and to be fair, he's afraid of the quickness. I see it, but it just kinda sucks because Samikin is there first, mobility's not in a position to actually auto attack do damage. Because of that, Winthrop, they're forced away. As we're back to live, Winthrop are trying to take control over the red buff. Music can just try and smite this away. It is secured from Winthrop. Red buff over to the Kindred, and they get out of there fine. Music actually 
as he chased down Sword. Doesn't have the ultimate available. Smite for the slow. Samikin's going in there. Not enough damage, not enough range. Robex needed to be the one to follow up as well, but he was just a little too far away. But he's actually still pushing Kindred away. They're trying to just keep vision so that they can get damage onto this mid turret. Yeah, even though they didn't get the five grubs, four means you do extra damage to structures. And with Lynx, how far ahead he is, he's able to get some value. Another turret Watch would music. do him really good. He actually can do a decent amount of damage here to oh, the Kindred with the Rakan knockup. That's Lambs just by used on only Trickster. As now teleports come in though, Trickster goes down. Swords joined in on the fight. Denethor's coming as well. Blue Otter, they're gonna have to fight their way out of this one. And they have backup. Another charm goes wide. Mobility can't get in there. Denethor immediately stopped from the Glacial Prison. So no Counter-Strike engage. Whoa! Now he gets scooped back. Blue Otter have arrived in this series with a roar as they will take the fight. Lawrence, ooh, does go down. Right as I say, Mobility gets excited. Still Blue Otter trading up two for one in kills. Yeah, still a really good fight for Blue Otter as now they have sh ballooned their gold lead up to 3,500. Uh, it seems like Winthrop are just off kilter right now, which is really surprising. I, their fight seems so disjointed. It feels like somebody is always late and Lynx, he is not afraid to move with the rest of this team to use that gold advantage that he has. And now he's going to get a turret on top of it. I, he's going to reach that second item, Blue Otter. This soul point in a minute 30 is basically guaranteed to be theirs. Holding abilities till the last moment is what wins Blue Otter this play. Let's get another look yes. at it though. As it's actually Kindred that gets caught out to begin with. Yeah, I think that's a really good shout out that we'll see soon. You get the Lamb's Respite out. As soon as this is done, you just have no way to fight anymore. But they keep going anyway. They get these two kills coming through and watch music. He ults Denethor as soon as the Counter-Strike comes yep. through. It's perfect. Beautiful. Lynx is no longer under threat and it makes this fight so much more playable on top of making time for Lawrence to set this up. If Denethor gets in there, gets a giant Counter-Strike, gets mobility, rockets on top of it, that could be really bad. But the fact that music holds the Glacial Prison for the optimal target. Yeah. Really good play from Blue Otter. The only way out of that situation was to win the fight and they won it. Hey, that's great patience from Music. I, another player who we've been talking about a couple times over this past week, I guess. Players trying to make it back to the NA sale. Music is one of them. Yeah. Was on Supernova. They ended up uh, bombing out of the promotion tournament, but still making their they way back in the summer's out. We yeah, can just say it, right? Okay, you know? fine. They got relegated. That's the that's the word that ended up happening here. But it's uh, cool to see music make that comeback, especially hearing from the guys in the qualifiers how much he's become a voice for the team. Winthrop don't want to give it for free, though. They're going to keep fighting, trying to catch out Sammy Ken, who still has Flash, still has Ultimate, so doesn't have to burn too many cooldowns here, but doesn't have teleports, so needs to stay on the map. Going to look for the fruits as Dragon is spawning. I think Winthrop have actually earned themselves this Dragon, potentially. Let's see how bad Blue Otter want to fight them for it. Ah, uh, I think, I think the angle here is to go for this okay. tier two, at the very least get this next wave in, because with Sword's ultimate down, you actually feel pretty confident about fighting approach. this. This is a real janky approach. Luata are coming in from Winthrop's side, which will cut off their retreat path. They can only go bot lane, but Winthrop oh. can actually just go forward and take the fight themselves. Denethor front oh. line, Glacial Prison goes wide, but the Rakan is gay! Oh from my Rubik's god! This is huge! Blue Otter are slaughtering Winthrop University in the river. Preventing the escape path, they give over the dragon, that's fine. They will take a triple kill to Denethor. Blue Otter puts Winthrop into the meat grinder, Kangas. They sacrifice the dragon, but for the great position for this fight. They're going to pick up a fourth, fifth kill even, yeah. and get My themselves a late Lawrence, It's you on the red exit this time around, and that will be a fourth kill to Lawrence, the top laner for Blue Otter. Well done. And you look at the approach to this fight. It's all Rovex to set things up. Yeah, and it, it's crazy too because, again, the Glacial Prison goes wide, but it doesn't matter. You get the triple knockup coming through, and the recognition, Blue Otter, they want to get these kills down to just make the fight that much easier. Even though the Kindred was alive, there was no chance that the Relam's Respite would end up being worth it after you lost so many people. 6-1-1 one, and one on the Crocodile after that one. The early levels went a little rough for Lawrence, but since then has had a massive comeback here. And that fight gets all the gold from the team and is in a position here to control 
the mid game. We're at a spot now where Denethor is a item behind. I mean, Denethor can't really look at Lawrence in the side lane right now. Nope. It will be very scary. Y you can come back as the Jax later on in the game, but at this point, you kind of have to just concede it. Revex looking at Sword. The charm lands on the same again, but no follow up. So, with the <laughs> University, are going to have to figure out a way to get back into this game. There's 6,000 gold behind, and it is not slowing down. We'll say a quick funny note. Sword ended up stealing the Scuttle Crab with the uh, Orb of Deception. But then, you know, it's a very tiny drop in the ocean that is this insane gold lead that Blue Water have right that now. Wasn't a lot now of damage right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, Sword doesn't do much at the moment, and neither do the rest of Winthrop University. Denethor gets a paltry objective bounty, but Kangas is going to cost him. Okay, Denethor, how much time can you buy and what can the team get on the other side? They're not hitting the top Nothing. wave right now. They're actually pinging for the Baron. So Denethor is just going to try and waste the time of oh, Blue wow. Otter. He's doing a great job so he far. Is, yeah. Just trying to keep his health up. Wait for that next counter strike. Jumps away. Locks down. Blue Otter will get the kill. We knew that was going to happen, but Teleport. time was wasted. Teleport coming up from Sammykin. Let's take a look at the Baron health. I want to see it right now. It's actually Lawrence that gets in there. Lawrence is in the wow. pit, and Lynx gets the kill. Another slaughter as Blue Otter can do no wrong. Triple kill to Lynx. They bought time. Winthrop, they almost had it, but the fact that Lawrence is able to get into the pit and just cause chaos massive for Blue Water as they are not oh. giving up their control of this game and that's gonna be an ace. Go next, Kangas. Get me oh. out of this game, man. I cannot believe how can you win that fight on the bottom side while also winning top side, winning on both sides of the map and stealing the Baron away, getting this delayed kill on the sword. Who was trying to teleport? You've just yeah. lost everything as Winthrop this game and you're now down 10,000 gold. I, I don't care about scaling anymore. Watch Lawrence, the teleport flank from Samikin and Lynx. Lawrence says, look at me, and then the yeah. carries can just jump in. Yeah, I will say this was really well coordinated. A lot of AoE damage comes through here. I, you have the Dominus, you have the Lightning Crash, and all the damage Lynx can do, and it just ends up setting for it perfectly. Remember, new season Baron, takes a while to go down. Does a lot of damage too, so it ended up being all the setup the water needed. This game is over. Beat down oh, 10,000 lead at 22 minutes. Blue Otter are back in this series. It looked rough in that game one, but they still fought till the end. And this time around, it doesn't look like there's much fight left in Winthrop University. Their carries just have nothing to work with right now and no means to slow the game down. Blue Otter with this Baron can continue CG, take away all the outer turrets and start looking at those inhibitors. And once that first inhibitor goes down, that pretty much spells the end of the game for Winthrop. And yeah, you can see it. The fact that this gold lead is insane, there's still a tier two turret that Blue Otter can get for themselves. Now they can start knocking on the base. Now they can start building towards taking down those inhibitors like you mentioned, Kangas. There's the first inhibitor turret being hit here by Lawrence. Oh, it's gone. In the mid lane. And yet, yeah, you know, just to bring it up, it is still have a wave coming up here in the bot lane too. So Winthrop University, they have Denethor top lane. That means they're in a 4v5 right now. Denethor will get the bounty from one turret. That's it. Non-committal engages. Glacial Prison doesn't land on anybody, but it bought the space that they needed. That's going to be two inhibitors picked up for Blue Otter. Unbelievable. The sacking of that third Ray Kegis. Blue Otter making the decision not to 50-50 a smite, but look for the fight after has paid off time after time. The gold lead has just blo blown up so much since then. And now they're going to collect their soul point anyway. Even though we're 23 minutes in the game, it's not going to be that late of a soul, all things considered. We honestly, I don't even think we're going to see the soul. Yeah, I don't think point. we need it. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you're One Blue fight. Otter, you have such a mountainous lead right now. And just... Yeah. You're not scared of anybody. Even like Sammy can, can front line right now. Look at this build. Like how is Sword gonna kill anybody on the enemy team? Lynx is really your only target. He's two levels above you with <laughs> three and a half items completed. So Some, yeah. And a dash. And a dash. Yeah. Blue Otter had a fantastic game too here. Absolutely earned. They have played this one pretty clean. And yeah. like you said, the decision making of the team has been very impressive. And, I, and something I wanted to bring up earlier, too, is that you got to give them the shout out. After losing a game you had control of at level one in game one, I, that, that's a lot of psychic damage, Kangas. I'm, I'm not going to cap. And with that in mind, the ability to bounce back, I mean, you credit some of the more experienced players on this roster more than likely. 
is still a wonder and something that should definitely be praised. It looks like the final base defense here from Winthrop. They actually do have enough to clear oh. that wave. Now that Baron's gone, it's a little harder for Blue Adder to siege. The Jinx Rockets and the Ari AoE damage can clear these out relatively quick. Blue Adder will need to wait for this next wave. I don't... I expect them to go for an engage under the turret at this point. They have the Glacial Prison, non-committal, and then they can just use the Azir range, the Zeri range, to kill somebody. They're not committing to it right now. Lawrence on a flank instead. And yeah. Winthrop University, they're, this is kind of best case scenario. The mid wave and bot wave are not exactly. crashing at the same time, so they actually have the ability to just hit waves as they come in. Yeah, so with Blue Otter not too confident about just starting a fight, and honestly, I, I think it ends up being fine. Once you get this third inhib tower down, then you can look for a fight, then you can just look to end the game. Uh, that's why you see Lawrence constantly in this position. There oh. it is. Yep. Oh my god. All right, they wait for Winthrop to split game's a little over. bit. Take down mobility, and that is the game. Blue Otter Esports. What a comeback here in this series. Game one, they almost had it, and game two, they dominated. Oh my goodness, Sword almost died to the minions. Blue Otter will take game two in style. Incredible macro play. Great mechanics. This time, Lynx is the player to go deathless in this one. And they will make it an even series tied 1-1. One, one. And a 12k gold lead to top it all off. Kangas, I'm going to say it. We got a series Ooh. on our hands. What did I tell you before we went live? We're going to five. I, you believe that? I, I hoped for that. it, but I wasn't sure what the expectation was. And I'm happy that we are actually getting a pretty even series so far. If anything, it's Blue Otter favored right now because their loss was much closer than their win. Yeah. This did not look like Winthrop had an idea of how they wanted to play out after the game got away from them a little bit there. So cool draft. We liked that. Now let's look at the execution here for the old collegiate representatives. But we're going to send it to a short break here while we get ready for game three to see who gets the lead in the series right after this. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long. Or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new footlong sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. Hello, my name is Samrith Lung. I go by Samikin on League of Legends. I was born in Cambodia, but I moved to the United States, to Pennsylvania around 2008, so when I was about four or five years old. We mainly played video games such as Wii Sports, and then we eventually got a laptop for my whole family to use. Since we like lived next to our cousins, we visited them often, and then we saw them playing League of Legends, so my brother got into League of Legends, and then I saw him playing, and then I got into League of Legends. I started in late season three, so I was about 10 years old, like nine to 10 years old. I was like a silver four player for like two years. In ninth grade, I hit grandmasters for the first time it was like about 450 ish lp and then during the same summer i took a university of pennsylvania summer program for mechanical engineering and one of the tas there was a college student in like his junior year and he also played league of legends i asked him if we could like play together sometime and then like the next day when i saw him after we had each other he was like I thought you'd just be like some kind of gold player like me. And then I like look over my friends list and I see that you're Grandmasters. I was like, oh, is that a high rank for like people my age? And he was like, yeah. I was like, oh, I am known as the Zoe one trick in high elo. Being able to hit rank one on a champion that most people didn't really play or believe to be really weak. So I'm like really happy that I was able to consistently stay in within the top 10 of NA for basically like three, four months, even like the middle of the season to the end of the season. I would say what really got me going into the competitiveness of League of Legends was definitely once I realized that I could get scholarships for just being good at the game and then finding a college that would be able to sponsor me. But in the end, I ended up choosing to not go the collegiate route. I was told by like my brother who had like a lot more experience in the esports scene that it's better to just go to a college that's good for you, that has like a good reputation and work on amateur stuff on the side. So I ended up going to Boston University. They didn't really give me any scholarships for being like an esports player. After from persuading from my friend Windoges, who also happens to be in the same year as me, he and convinced me to get onto the League of Legends team because I was like very apprehensive at first. I made like a lot of great friends here at 
Boston University, it made me realize that the main reason why I chose to go to an out of state college was so kind of have a lot more freedom from my busy family life. I meet like a whole bunch of new people outside of like my usual sphere of friends by taking this leap. I knew and I'd hoped that I'd be good enough to be able to get into a new world of amateur and LCS. After going 2-3 in the spring open qualifiers, I had to take a break. I couldn't play in the summer open qualifiers because I was vacationing in Cambodia with my family at the time. I came back, grinded it all, hell out of solo queue, started college, got back challenger, and then I got invited by Karen Moser from EG as a part of the EG X HPE combine. And I was really surprised because there was like this rule about 40% of a person's champion pool cannot be on one champion. And I asked her about it uh, after the combine and she was like, oh yeah, you were like just under 40% when we made the snapshot of inviting players. That is really lucky. If I had over 40%, I probably wouldn't have been able to been invited to that combine and I probably wouldn't have been like exposed to the world basically. Going into the combine, I knew that I was one of the better like laners and i know that i could transition that into leads so i felt like i was definitely around the same level as everyone else and maybe even like a little bit better in certain aspects such as like laning and mechanics and micro so i felt like i really belonged there there was no imposter syndrome this time rovex was the one that actually reached out to me i was talking with some other teams about potentially being on their roster but then i saw their roster with Lynx and music and lawrence and they were only missing a mid laner most of the like the really good mid, -laner, mid laners already had like nacl offers and oq offers from like really established teams or like orgs. I was basically one of the last few mid laners. I guess that was the main reason why they picked me. So like, I'm grateful for it, but I'm glad to have been given this chance. My goal is to definitely become an LCS player. My goal for this split is to definitely make it to at least a promotional tournament and defeat an NACL team. I've already declared myself one rival, one Mr. Toasty Alex. We basically started at the exact same time. He is basically the opposite of what I am. Even though we have both very good lane phases, he is, in my opinion, he has a lot better macro and engages in team fights as well as flanks, which is something that I still lack. He will be the one person that I will be looking forward to playing against and defeating eventually. On Twitter, I don't really use Twitter that much. At Samikin PW, at Samikin Lol on Twitch as well. And on YouTube, it's just Samikin, I believe.